aloha and welcome to Talk Story with John Wahe. You know, there is so much happening in the world, in America, in Hawaii, that I just thought it would be nice to just chat with a fellow host and actually the head of uh, Think Tech Hawaii, uh, Jay Fidel, uh, just, just to sort of debrief all the multitude of events uh, that are happening. And, uh, you know, Jay's one of the most knowledgeable persons I know because he gets to interact with all the hosts and their guests and he gets to talk to a lot of people. So, Jay, thank you for making time for us this afternoon. Oh, it's so nice to join you, John. You know, we I enjoy doing this with you. You know, from time to time, it's 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 like a little refresher course. And so, <laughs> here we are again. And uh, I guess what do we do? We I guess we we you know the title of our show is "Where Goeth America?" You know, I mean, I, I think that people, you know, one of the things that's happening right now is a lot of us are at home because of the of the COVID. Uh, threat and we're sitting there and we're watching the news and we're watching all the cable and regular news stations and and all and we'll be catching up with current events in in, uh, in 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 this country and all over the country there's these riots going on and, and people are, are legitimately concerned um the whole ugly scepter of I guess it would be the racist undercurrent of America it's just surfacing. You know, have you uh, been talking about any of this in your programming? Oh yeah, we just uh, just uh, last hour we talked to Kenneth Lawson. He's a uh, faculty member at uh, the law school in UH. Right, right. <clears throat> and he was he was talking about uh, he's black. He was talking about um, the uh, the Floyd murder. And, and and the riots uh, and protests that follow. It's very interesting to hear it from him. He's got a, a well. He's really a really thoughtful... he's a a good lawyer, and he will know the implications of it. I I listened to Trevor <coughs> Howard today, and he did an mm -hmm. excellent essay, and he sort of tied the um, tied the current situation because of the Floyd protest back to I guess her name was Amy Cooper. In, yes. in, in, in New York, uh, that was the video that we all saw uh, about a week ago, I guess, where this woman who's walking her dog in, through New York to, you know, just a little innocuous kind of um, activity, walking through, New York, taking her dog, and there's a sign there saying, like, leash your dog and the rest of it. And instead of doing that, she unleashes the dog. And this gentleman who is a bird watcher uh, uh, videotapes her and asks her politely, actually, to please uh, leash your dog up because uh, that's what the rules are. And instead of doing that, she threatens him uh, by calling the police and specifically saying, and specifically saying, uh, um, that I'm going to tell them that you are attacking me. So what we have here is a white woman with uh, uh, calling uh, uh, the uh, the policeman to come there and uh, deal with this black gentleman who is telling her not to uh, to, to to leash her dog. And, and and the point of all of, and knowing that or believing that when she makes the call that there's this automatic presumption that he must be guilty. He must be guilty of doing something. And the point of all of that was that is a fact of life for many, uh, that institutional racism. In other words, to know ahead of time as a, a deliberate act that by calling the police, more likely than not, this person would get arrested or and uh, and maybe even treated badly. Uh, where, where's this country going? I mean, how does how do we do that? I mean, that's 
you know, to me, when you add, when you put that incident, and then you see this gentleman who uh, a human being is begging uh, for some relief, not giving it. I mean, what what's happening to our country, Jay? I, I mean, I don't, you know. There's I, an incredible it, amount of racial bias, uh, racial racism. Um, and it's it seems to be pervasive. And, I, you know, some say that it's more now than it was before, even through our lifetime, so it seems. And I, I don't think the black community is willing to accept the continuation of it. No. And it, there must be some, you know, rational, sympathetic solution. But it hasn't, it hasn't emerged yet. Maybe these protests will cause people in general and the justice system and specifically to, to be more careful about the way they, they treat the disparity in races. Well, what's uh, interesting, though, is the, the juxtaposition, apparently, of racism and law enforcement. You, you know, I, I mean, she, she didn't, like, scream out for the gentleman walking neck, you know, somewhere around her. She didn't call for him. You know, what she did was call the cop. And, you know, and it's sad because over the years, so much has been done um, to make police departments more aware and, 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 and uh, you know, more uh, sensitive to, but to they're this. Not. They're, they're, they're not. Black. And it's happening too often to say that they are. And so the question is, uh, why is this? Yeah, why? And the answer is, I think it's a natural human condition that people, you know, harbor a certain amount of racism, especially perhaps in, in, a, in a police situation where they live in the suburbs they go into the inner city, which is like a war zone for them, okay? And they, and they get into this kind of paranoid mode, and they do things like that. Well, and, 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 and it's murderous. It's against the rules. It's against the law. It's, um, it's going to be punishable in this case by very severe punishment. Which I think, I think the is The problem is the... you need to have a leader. You know, you need to have a leader. It's the bully pulpit. It's the bully pulpit of the president mostly because this is a national issue. And instead of, instead of uh, trying to resolve things, the man, the man repeatedly throws kerosene on the fire. And that happened again today. Uh, and certainly it happened last week. And it's going to happen all the time. He is not competent um, to, to, uh, to, to make things right. He is not competent to soften, you know, the the racism in the country. You know and what so it is, though, to get uh, Jay, be, I, I want to come back to Trump, but before we go there, you know, it, I, it seems like it, it's not necessarily just about white policemen and the black population. I mean, one of the interesting things about the, the, the Floyd situation was that one of the cops was actually an Asian. One of the, he was standing by, but he was actually Asian. So it seems like, and uh, and in other instances, there were even black policemen involved in, in past. So it seems like this thing is more than just two races not getting along. It's more institutional. It's part of our uh, everyday psyche. And it's, it's unfortunate. Um, in fact, the gentleman that got charged for murder apparently uh, has an Asian wife. She has since filed for divorce. And, 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 and but you know, some of this stuff is just uh, it's just incredible. Like, and now we have a president who is instead of doing something about the ugliness, seems to be stirring it up. I mean, he. Has he said anything at all? Uh, I mean, uh, that was um, understanding of how the people might feel about, uh, you know, the Floyd uh, situation or even the uh, Cooper situation. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't heard him. Have you? I, I think he may he may have made some uh, brief, but in you know, 
um, uh, brief but ineffective remarks. You know, it's, it's interesting. Really anything anything of something, but interestingly enough, some, the, a lot of the very conservative commentators are coming out and say there's no justification uh, for what happened to Floyd. I mean, they, they may not agree with the uh, protests, but they certainly seem like they understand the people's anger a lot more than the old, you are, I would say, or maybe I yeah, shouldn't say. I, you know, it's, it's the, the technology, the is, it, it's, it's a camera, and the camera has sound, and the whole thing is recorded. And that, and that video is um, uh, exhibit A of exactly what happened, and it demonstrates conduct that is unforgivable. You know, there was, I, I can see where people, it might have been a presumption that, hey, you know, the... Because the first news out in that kind of situation, oh, he's resisting arrest. He's doing, hey, by the way, I I know, and I don't want to make light of this, but it's um, oftentimes that kind of inst uh, reaction uh, is not only directed to to people uh, uh well they're directed to people of color in general and and i'm not trying to make uh, blacks in particular but also poor people homeless people homeless people in, in in you know and i think for those of us in hawaii maybe we ought not to be so smug it might be instances in hawaii when we're dealing with those individuals that are not part of the mainstream of our society when that might be happening. Maybe this might be a good opportunity for us to take a look inside. I don't oh, know. I, I think that's a, I think that's a, a, a good suggestion. Um, with you, I, I remember a time when the police uh, here in Hawaii were, were really friendly. Uh, yeah, they, in fact... You could talk I, to them, they could talk to you, but not anymore. You know, and... and and at the same time, you know, we've got to appreciate the fact that they are protecting us and our lives and so forth. But it, it seems like our civilization has gotten kind of screwed up, you know, and which brings us back to your favorite personality in the entire, on the entire planet, which is our, I hate to use the word our, which is the president. And um, you're right. This morning, he was on a telephone call with the governors of the states, in not talking about improving race relations, but talking about using force in a stronger way. You know, send the National Guard in. I remember back in the 60s when doing that ended up with the Kent State Massacre, you know, where people were killed. The is same, that what, the is that what thought, we're going yeah. to? You know, I mean, is this country? Well, he's, going, he's going to he's going to have the armed troops um, quell any disturbance. He's already said that when the looting begins, the shooting begins. Remember that comment last week? I, wow. I don't think he'd hesitate to to order the army to shoot people just like Kent State. You know, this is uh, <laughs> when that happened in Kent State. It was a shock to the entire nation. And to have it happen again, you'd think we had moved on past that, you know. What happens when you order? And the thing about the National Guard is that the National Guard are not professional soldiers. These are not people who are, now they're professionals and they're soldiers, but they're not people who every day uh, spend their time in the military. They're, they're they're your fellow, uh, the person sitting next door, uh, next in the next desk to you um, in the office buildings, the, the person building your house. The, you know, there's, come, there's civilians called in for yeah. emergencies, and, and they're f fantastic people. I, I remember when we had a hurricane in Hawaii. If it weren't for the National Guard, we wouldn't have been able to recover as well as we could. And now all of a sudden, we're asking people's neighbors to shoot them. 
Uh, what kind? Of, I don't. I don't. I, I tell you, Jay. I don't want to sound like I'm pontificating, but I, I, I don't understand this president at all. Well, it's, I, it's, you know, it's not that he has direct control over them, uh, because they theoretically work for the governor. Yeah, but he can state. militarize he has, them, like he like they did with when Eisenhower did uh, did it to integrate the schools. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he's threatening that he may do. He may call them into service, and he does have the power. Now, normally they're under the, you're right, they're under the, 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 the um, authority of a governor. But the president of the United States can override everybody and call the, as they call it, the national militia into service. Bam. Or Just, send the or send the army in, make the army available and send them in. But you know all of this, all of this is a, it, ultimately a political question because when you shake it and bake it, what Trump wants to do is win the election by whatever means. And um, if, if he divides the country, I, I'm I'm really asking a question, John. If, if he divides the country and has everybody fighting with each other, if he has an emergency on his hands, on our hands. Uh, doesn't that help him politically uh, to derail the election in his favor? Well, it, it doesn't seem to be helping him right now. But what it does do, because his numbers are falling and people are getting discussed, you know, all of this is also happening in an era of uh, isolation. And uh, because of the co covert ni 19 uh, crisis that... Um, you know, people have gotten, how do I say this? Un, uh, Americans have gotten used to uh, 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 the, the executive branch, both on the state level and the national level, using extraordinary powers, using extraordinary powers. And, I, and it's a, uh, so, you, you know, you can do, now, the way he's handled this crisis hasn't worked very well for him. And it's, and some of this stuff may even uh, get worse. But the first thing in my mind is that here's a president who is talking about sending troops in and doing all of this, in a sense, inflaming uh, what's going on, and not at the least bit concerned about the fact that his actions may have contributed to the over 100,000 people who died in America. I think and, he's trying to distract us from that. Well, you know, some people are saying, and I'm, I don't buy this theory, so I'm, before I say it, I'm going to make it real uh, clear. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think he's distracting. But there are, other, there are people who think that since the majority of those uh, that people that die and, and that are affected by the COVID virus apparently are the lowest rang, rungs of our society, minority groups, poor people, homeless people, people like this, that this president doesn't mind them dying. You know, he, he's made a, cal this is a calculating guy. He doesn't mind them dying. And then instead of doing something that might, uh, 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 you know, bring people together, he inflames them instead. And so it's, in, 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 I don't know if he's hardening his base. Uh, one of the, well, one of the more interesting things for me is the, are the ultra conservatives in this country who were his total apologists who are now um, criticizing him. For both things, for the way he handled the the virus crisis, and for the way he's handling this particular this racial flare-up, I don't know. Well, I I I think that there's a, the common point is to disrupt, uh, create more divisiveness. Uh, there are so many reports, credible reports of um, skinheads who uh, have joined the protest, who have um, distributed weapons, bricks, for example, in the protests, uh, who have tried to make the protests more violent. 
who are the violent leaders of the protest. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but there's a certain element in the country, including Trump, that wants to see divisiveness, that wants to see tumult and chaos. And, and I don't he, know how exactly he thinks it's going to help him, but surely that's what he's doing. In, in terms of people, um, one of the more irritating uh, commentaries uh, this morning was the fact that some of those, um, you know, anti, actually anti-police, a lot of those uh, groups are anti-law enforcement. I mean, and they're trying to provoke instances with the police. One of the groups, I think it was in Minneapolis or someplace, in order to identify themselves, were wearing what they called Hawaiian shirts. I, and, I, and that was, uh, I got to tell you. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's it, an insult to all of us. It's an insult to everybody <laughs> in Hawaii. And they were probably, the shirts were probably from California, but uh, it would be an insult to Californians. It was an insult to everybody in this country. And, and I, you know, but the, the silver lining in that cloud before I ask you the question of the day, the silver lining in that cloud was the fact that at a lot of these protests, they actually have developed people now who are watching for things like that to happen. I, I just uh, saw, I guess it was in a, on NSBC, or I, I'm not sure which channel, and they were, there was a, a guy that was pulling the bricks up, getting ready to throw it at the police, and this group of individuals just grabbed him stood him up, made him uh, drop it, and hauled him over to the cops and told them and, and told the policeman, this guy's not part of the protest. He's provoking something here. And, you know, so maybe in this era of electronics, people, you know, can adjust fast enough to some of these things. So hopefully mm. we'll be more. That's, that's encouraging. But I think, I think um, we're going to have to see this tilt one way or the other in the next few days to see whether it takes on um, a more threatening tone or a less threatening tone. Well, let me it's ask you. Now, it's, it's not good for the country. It's absolutely not good for the country. In fact, to be really clear, uh, frank, my personal view is that America has never been as weak as it is right now, both internally, economically, and maybe even militarily in the sense that when a divide, I mean, most people that I know that are former, you know, commanders uh, of our armed forces will, uh, have told me over the years, more times than, than not, that uh, the weak, the worst thing for, a mil for the military, for military strength is a divided country. And mm -hmm. you can't have that. But let me ask you the question that I've been saving up for this moment, which is, okay, Jay, do you think that we are actually going to have an election in in America, a presidential election? I mean, I, uh, you know, given all that you see, do you think, and this might be speculative, and I mean an actual fair election, you know, something that uh, happens that's not sort of rigged by the by this crazy, by this president, you think so or not? Are you still hopeful? Well, I uh, actually I'm more hopeful now than I was a few days ago. I'll tell you why. Really? Yeah, I mean he's been suppressing votes. He's he and the Republicans have been gerrymandering, gerrymandering um, you know, jurisdictions all over the country. Uh, he is working very hard to destroy the post office, uh, and the post office is the key to mail-in ballots. He's working hard to destroy mail-in ballots. Yes. Um, and he's supporting all these things all around the country that are intended to deprive um, minorities and many others, too, um, Democrats uh, of votes. And, you know, his, his stated purpose for that is, I want to stop the Democrats from voting because... Uh, if they vote, I'll lose. He said that in so many yeah, words. Yeah, he said that. <laughs> well, that's the essence so the of question, that. I, you know, I would have thought going in that the guy had, uh, oh, and there's scenarios, both the Washington Post and the New York Times uh, have written up these groups that are, uh, I mean, I think they're groups within the paper or they're groups of people who consult with the paper um, who 
who, who have you know, identified scenarios that Trump might follow in destroying the election, uh, in not having an election, deferring an election, uh, calling an emergency, uh, somehow screwing it up so that he can stay in office. Aside from the possibility he might win because his base is there and maybe, you know, he'll get the electoral votes like he did with Hillary Clinton. Um, so uh, until a few days ago, I was operating in the assumption that the guy had so many irons in the fire screw up the election that there's a fair chance he'll be able to do that and somehow remain in office. I mean, remember, if he stayed in office, if he physically stayed in the White House and refused to leave, who would force him to go? It wouldn't be right. Congress. Congress is neutralized. Would it be the Supreme Court? He'd make some kind of argument, Supreme Court would be neutralized. I mean, after all, a lot of them are his people, especially, you know, uh, when Ruth Bader Ginsburg isn't there and she might not be there at the time. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I would have said that, I would have said that he's got a pretty good chance at screwing it up. But these events and what he has done to obviously pour fuel on the fire of these protests, to obviously do his thing about being a jerk um, and uh, uh, distracting us from the reality of over 100,000 lives, I think people are probably going to get the idea just how bad a president he is. And if he was claiming that he helped the economy, I'm not sure that he can revive the economy. I don't think he can. So what we're going to have is an awful slide between now and November, and he won't have any he won't have any real um, arguments to make that he is a great president and should be reelected. And and even people who are not fully informed will, will see that. They, I, I believe they are beginning to see that. So assuming that he doesn't find a way to avoid the election altogether by some emergency declaration, by some, you know, remarkable... Or by closing the Senate, post office. Or by closing the post office, you know, and, and, and getting away with it. Uh, if we relied on any kind of vote, even a vote where a lot of people have been suppressed and all that, um, I think the landslide will be against him. That's what I think. Well, so uh, I'm not nearly as sure. I'm not nearly as worried about him winning somehow coming out uh, as president after this election. You know, I had an uncle that always said, used to tell me that you can fool some of the people all the time. You can fool, you know, um, all of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool everybody all of the time. So we'll see. We'll see whether, you know, your faith in humanity saves our country. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for doing this with me this afternoon. And everybody, Thank we'll you, see Bill. you again in two weeks. Aloha. Thank you, John.